Al Assad, cousin of the Syrian president and political campaigner who's exiled in London. First, so let's go to Birmingham and talk to Malik Al Abde, a political activist and spokesman for the Syrian opposition. Um, is, is there a sense, Malik, that, that what is happening in Syria is being overshadowed somewhat by, by the, the situation in Libya at the moment? I mean, can you bring us up to date with what the situation is? Well, yeah, uh, Syrians are rather frustrated at the moment with uh, the Libyan uh, developments overshadowing what's happening in Syria. Uh, what's happening in Syria is, uh, is very, very important. Um, potentially, it could be the most uh, significant uh, democratic revolution in the whole region, possibly overshadowing Libya, also over overshadowing what's happening in Yemen. That's because the Syrian regime is possibly, possibly the most repressive regime uh, in the region, and also because of the geostrategic importance of Syria. Of course, if the Syrian regime uh, does fall, uh, this could have huge uh, repercussions on, on Iran, on, on Lebanon, and also on the Israel-Palestinian uh, conflict. So uh, really, I think uh, more attention has to be paid to Syria. Uh, Syrian activists on the ground, especially those in Dara at the moment, who are, uh, which is being encircled by tanks. This is the latest reports coming out from Dara. Uh, they're crying out for more uh, media attention. And we, we have had reports of a, a number of fatalities, of tear gas being fired at uh, mourners at the funerals of some of those who have been killed. I mean, is there a sense that, I mean, from, from your standpoint, that the, the action that the authorities there are taking is uh, completely out of step with, with the situation or the threat, if you can put it that way, being posed by the, the protesters? Oh, absolutely. Uh, these are, of course, unarmed protesters. Uh, they came out uh, on Tuesday to begin with. That's when uh, uh, the 15th of March revolution uh, began. Uh, all, they were all unarmed uh, protesters. Uh, the regime uh, fired on them with uh, live ammunition. Uh, six people died yesterday. Today, of course, uh, their funerals were held. And uh, also the regime also sent in uh, huge uh, numbers of security, uh, security men and they fired on them again using uh, tear gas and uh, rubber bullets. I spoke to one eyewitness uh, today who told me that the situation is, is extremely critical uh, and they are crying out for uh, more attention to be paid to what's happening in Dara because potentially there could be a, a, a very, very bad uh, situation and possibly a, a massacre happening in that city. Well, let's talk now to Ribal al-Assad, a cousin of the, of the Syrian president. I mean, obviously the situation on the ground there is extremely serious. There does seem to be a tremendous amount of violence taking place against these protesters. Yes, uh, as I said last time um, when I came, when I spoke uh, on Sky News, I said we are for peaceful transitional change. And the regime in Syria should allow demonstration, peaceful demonstration. They should allow uh, the uh, people's right of association and of expression. And uh, those people should not, they should not be harmed, and they should not be in, uh, they should not be put in, uh, in any way, in a, you know, uh, at harm's way. It's, that would be disastrous. Well, why, why do you think then that this is happening as it is, that this is unfolding as it is, and this this type of action and violence is taking place against these protesters? We've been calling for a while. We saw this coming, and we've been calling on the Syrian regime to, ch you know, to change, to start changing, you know, and they have they have not been listening. And uh, I've said repeatedly, I've, I've called on the Syrian regime to change, to call uh, for all uh, opposition group, on, uh, to call for a government of national unity, uh, to, go, uh, to call for a national dialogue. And uh, look what's been happening all over the Middle East. You know, the Syrian regime have not been listening and they, are not, they have not been uh, watching what's been happening elsewhere, like in uh, Tunisia, Egypt, and now in Libya. And uh, they should move very quickly. We, you know, the, the situation cannot... Uh, you know, cannot uh, stay like this forever. I mean, what would the repercussions be if the regime was to fall rather than some sort of compromise coalition being formed with the opposition groups? In, in, Syria, uh, in Syria, that kind of scenario would be, uh, honestly, disaster because, uh, uh, as it's uh, known, as I repeat also again, that in Syria you have a lot of uh, 
uh, you know, a lot of religions, a lot of peoples in Syria, you know, and... Uh, uh, and, and it's a, clearly a, a key strategic player. Of course, and it's of, uh, you know, of, uh, because of its geopolitical, you know, uh, uh, where it's situated in, in the region, you know, like uh, it will affect all uh, the countries around it, you know, Iraq, Lebanon, uh, Jordan, I think it would be really disastrous, even, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, Palest the Palestinian, uh, you know, um, peace process, uh, the, everything else. Uh, Malik, I mean, you are a spokesman for the for the Syrian opposition, even though you are uh, here in the UK at the moment. I mean, is there still um, a mood, a sense, a willingness? Should the regime uh, decide to to want to to compromise, to want to look at some sort of transition and change? Oh, apologies, Malik Abde has has, has gone in all of this. He's uh, he's left us now. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll put that to you, Rival. Do, do you think? that there is any sense that um, the opposition groups and what you've seen and what, with the action that has been taking place, do you think there is any sense now that, that they would be willing to compromise if the regime decided to give ground? Yes, everybody, nobody, I mean, all the opposition groups have been calling on the same things. They all want the government to change. Nobody is calling on the, uh, if you have heard what, uh, what was, uh, what were the demonstrations were, were chanting yesterday or what they were saying yesterday you know they were calling for peaceful demonstrations you know they wanted the regime to change you know they want the regime uh, uh, to call on a national unity as i've said uh, they want an end to corruption they want an, uh, an end to to uh, uh, to uh, arre you know arresting people and putting them in jail for just express, uh, expressing themselves uh, this is not acceptable today you know we are in the 21st century people could see i mean with all the technologies that uh, you know the internet mobile phones and uh, and others you know uh, social media uh, people are we are all connected and we could see what's happening abroad and people would never accept to live today how they used to live uh, 10 or 20 or 30 years ago about al Assad, appreciate your time and your views. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's take you through the top stories here on Sky News this evening. The French Defence Minister.